At this time, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, who will present a resolution honoring the African American Children's Book Project. With Vanessa Lloyd Scambati and those accompanying her, please join the Councilwoman at the podium. And joining the Councilwoman, we have Councilman Green. Councilwoman Blackwell, Councilwoman Parker, and Councilwoman Keone Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, next to saluting uh, women who are doing extraordinary things and uh, next to saluting anything arts and culture. For me, my next favorite experience here in City Council is saluting authors of children's books. I have enormous uh, respect and admiration for those who have the ability to take their creative energy and then the discipline uh, to reduce that creative energy to writing. Quite frankly, I'd have to admit that I envy authors of children's books. Uh, so with that confession, uh, Edward Albee once remarked, the act of writing is an act of optimism. You would not know the trouble to do it if you thought it did not matter. So if we accept that and if we embrace the notion that nothing we do for children is ever wasted, uh, then we know that the worth of a book is to be measured by what children can carry away from it. With that, it's always a wonderful pleasure for me to honor and recognize and lift up and celebrate the African Americans Children's Book Project on the occasion of the 25th annual African American Children's Book Fair and that February 4th is the kickoff of the National Literacy Initiative, Preserve a Legacy, Buy a Book. Whereas in 1926, noted historian Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History announced the second week of February to be Negro History Week. And? Whereas the second week in February was chosen because of the birthdays of President Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. And whereas during early American history, African Americans were not allowed to learn to read and have books. In some states, the penalty for this infraction was death. And whereas the importance of book fairs cannot be understated, and for 24 years, the African American Children's Book Fair has enhanced multiculturalism in our city, utilizing the joy of reading as a tool. And whereas Vanessa Lois Gambati created the book fair because she believes books open up a world of opportunities for children, and after 24 years, the African American Children's Book Fair is the oldest and largest single day event for children's books in the country. And Whereas one of the most important reasons to encourage reading in our children is that studies show that the more our youth read, the more likely they are to make positive lifestyle decisions as they grow older. Literacy also makes our youth more productive global citizens. And whereas, strictly judging by attendance, the fair is a tremendous success. As well, over 3,500 people attended the fair in the past years from across the nation. And whereas, rich or poor, no one leaves empty-handed as the books themselves are priced at a level where they are more affordable and posters, bookmarkers, and raffle books are distributed free of charge to attendees. And whereas, the success of the event is reflected in four elements. The attendees, parents, children, caregivers, and educators, the authors and illustrators, the sponsors and the volunteers, Tears. Three of the esteemed participants will be Christine Kendall, Anzio Williams, and the volunteers. In October 2016, Scholastic Corp. published Kendall's debut novel, Riding Chance. The novel is nominated for a 2016 NAACP Image Literary Award. Riding Chance is a coming-of-age story about Troy's and urban teens' redemption through horses and the game of polo. The novel entails the story of Troy and his ability to summon the courage to determine his own identity and... 
Whereas, Kendall's short fiction has also been published in Nietzsche Literacy, uh, Literary Magazine and is forthcoming from the Quayle Journal. She also studied children's literature at the Southampton Writers Conference and was named a semifinalist in the 2014 River Sticks Microfiction Contest. And, whereas before becoming an author, Kendall held various recruitment and diversity positions at major law firms in Philadelphia and New York. In 2014, Kendall was honored to join the NAACP Legal Defense Fund to coordinate the 50th anniversary commemoration of the historic Brown versus Board of Education decision. She also served as executive assistant to LDF's director, council, and president. And whereas in 2012, Anzio Williams joined the NBC10 Philadelphia and Telemundo 62 family as the new director and vice president. Williams is an active member of the National Association for Black Journalists. He has served on many community boards and committees, such as the American Diabetes Association, Blood Source, and 100 Black Men of Sacramento. And, whereas as news director and vice president of NBC10 Philadelphia and Telemundo 62, Williams has set an inclusive and diverse tone that serves the diverse needs of Philadelphia viewers. He is called diverse and inclusive news coverage as a, quote, necessary and serious news undertaking, end of quote, and, whereas in 2015, Williams was honored with the Philadelphia Association of Black Journalists Impact Award for his commitment to striving to build on the work of those who paved the way for him and acknowledging that race is still an issue to be tackled in the newsroom. He has led the charge to promote literacy in the region through Af the African American Children's Book Fair and serves as the steward and champion of the NBC 10 Telemundo 62 Reading Circle. And whereas Volunteers are the glue that keeps everything together throughout our city and our nation. Since its inception, the African American Children's Book Project and its volunteers, Constance Ragsdale, Leslie Gaines, Beverly Gaines, Sheila Love, Barbara Tyree, Patricia Wellington, Deborah Turner, Deborah Johnson, Michelle Lloyd, and Jim Harris that have so willingly given up their time to make sure that children in Philadelphia have access to books that empower, enrich, and enlighten their lives. These are the literally, literal, literacy ambassadors that promote our mantra, a book opens up a world of opportunities. And... Whereas the 25th Annual African American Book Fair will be held free of charge, ink that on your schedules, this Saturday, February 4th, 2017, from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Community College of Philadelphia, who has been a steward and a sponsor and a help partner in this effort forever. Thank you, Lynette Brown So, located at 17th and Spring Garden Streets. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that we hereby honor, recognize, salute, and congratulate the African American Children's Book Project on the occasion of the 25th Annual African American Children's Book Fair, and that February 4th is the kickoff of the National Literacy Initiative. Preserve as a legacy by a book. Let's salute Vanessa Lloyd Skimbody, Anzia Williams, and all the others. Thank you, Blondell. I call her the literary politician. Um, and of course, President Dell Clark, he has been an inspiration to many of us here in the city. We knew when he was just sitting on the sidelines, and he's gone on to lead the city in a very effective way. And also, many of you council people who have not supported it by coming out to the event, I encourage you to show your face. You will beat the next generation of Philadelphians who are going to be productive and make this city thrive. I want to acknowledge a couple of things before I pass the mic. I'm not going to take too much time here because y'all know I love to talk about myself. You know, when I started this journey, I was told that you needed a couple of elements to make it a success, a quarter of a century ago. You need a location, you need talent, you need sponsors, and media. Thanks to Lynette Brown-So, 
I found the location so that every year, that's not one of the things I have to worry about. Talent. We have the best and the brightest. And when people hear me say that, they're like, yeah. These are all the people who win the American Library Association Awards, all the mega awards in the industry. In fact, the person who won the best children's illustrated book out of 10,000 books is going to be here in Philadelphia. And we'll be giving away that person's book also at the event. Sponsors. Anzio Williams has been NBC 10, Telemundo 62. They came in. They said, what can we do to help? They used to give a black history party, so now they give books to children. They will give away 500 brand new books. Each child that attends this event is going to have a book that's appropriate to their interests. And I can't forget Melanie Lassiter, Sharon Powell. They work for companies that have supported this effort. And the media. Anzio wears two hats here. He's a part of the media who makes sure we get accurate coverage. And I believe Cherry Gregg and WRD um, is broadcasting, and WDS and WUSL. These are all people who've gotten the message out to the community about this wonderful event. And if you want to do an event, and you want to do it with class and style, you've got to have great volunteers. And the people standing in back of me are people who come and selfishly give up their time. They don't get paid, and I am a diva. Well, I like to say I'm a princess in exile, okay? <laughs> I don't have a court, so I work what I, what I could work with. But before I pass on the mic, the people who are standing here, I've known them. I won't say since I'm a child, because then somebody's going to pull me aside and say, we're the same age. <laughs> but Janie Blackwell, who's been a friend and also a champion of literacy, Maria Kionis, who's also another champion. Sherelle, I, I really have known her since she was a kid. And Blondell Reynolds Brown, who has always made sure that we kick off Black History Month here in City Council in the appropriate way. No singing, no dancing. It is all about the books. So I encourage everyone to come out. Um, people like Wells Fargo, Pico, Comcast, Health Partners Plan will be giving books to teachers to use in their classrooms, books of guest award-winning authors and illustrators, as well as there's lots of books and things to purchase. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Christine. Christine came to my book fair for three years in a row, and she stood in line, because there is a line to get in, and three years later, she has a book published by one of the top publishers, Scholastic Books, as well as she got nominated for an NAACP Image Award. Then Anzio will step to the mic. He's like a homeboy now. We love him. He's always doing something to help the community. And Patrika Wellington will speak on the on behalf of the volunteers, and we'll let you get back to the business of running Philadelphia. Thank you. It's truly an honor to be here. On Saturday, thousands of kids and families will once again stand in long lines on Spring Garden Street in the winter's cold, waiting for the doors to the African American Children's Book Fair to open. The doors to the world of books. If you stand in that line with your fellow Philadelphians, you too will feel the energy of young readers hungry for more good books. It's an unforgettable experience. I've attended the book fair in the past as a consumer, and this year I'm honored to be a participating author with my debut novel, Riding Chance. But more importantly, I'm so very happy that this book fair is alive and well and celebrating its 25th year. I salute Vanessa Lois Gambati for her hard work and dedication, and I look forward to there being a book fair for many years to come. Thank you. I just want to quickly acknowledge Kenyatta Johnson. He has been supporting the book fair also. Uh, Mr. President and the council, thank you. Uh, thank you to Vanessa for having the vision to, uh, to put together uh, a book fair like this and continue to work. And uh, if anybody knows Vanessa, when she calls, and then the second time she calls, and the third time she calls, you, you, you know, she, she's not going to give up. But uh, I thank her for, uh, for, allowing, uh, for allowing NBC10 and Telemundo 62 to be a part of this. As the vice president of news, I have a front row seat uh, to what happens when kids go the wrong way. 
you know, most of the time if you're watching news, you know, we are showing the bad side of things. And so this is an opportunity for us to get out in front of things. This is an opportunity for us to have an impact on kids' lives uh, in, in a positive way. Uh, I always say if you can read and you can write, you will have a job forever. If you can read and you can write, you'll have a job forever. So, again, I thank uh, the council and I thank uh, Vanessa uh, for the vision and this project. Thank you. Hello, my name is Patrika Wellington, and I'm a volunteer for the Children's Project, African American Children's Project. Um, it's been a pleasure. For over 20 plus years, I've been coming from actually Wilmington, Delaware, to come and volunteer at this fabulous affair that she gives in every year. I do look forward to it. I work with the volunteers. We come in early to get it prepared for 1 o'clock to see everybody come through those doors. And we work diligently. Thanks to Vanessa, who is something, somebody remarkable. I give all kudos to her for putting this together. I have not seen anything like this. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I have not seen it. I live in Wilmington. I brought a bus up from Wilmington of students as a retired teacher. I went to Brooklyn, brought my nieces, nephew to this. It's a wonderful, wonderful. Keep reading. That's all I can tell you. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Thank you. Council will be at ease.